Hello, um, I present to you a Flame on Slurm HPC clusters, um, aka Rethinking HPC. Um, and yeah, uh, I'm Marek, I'm a student at uh, FU Berlin, and uh, I'm a software developer at Incube. And um, yeah, let's talk about my motivations. Um, for my master thesis, um, I want to extract knowledge graph from text. And for that, uh, I want to run uh, large language models on GPUs and um, want to use two use a tool calling to extract uh, the graph from the text. Uh, but I have a problem. G how to get GPUs? I got no budget for Fly.io. Maybe the, there is some Kubernetes in the university, but in the Kubernetes there are no GPUs. And I got no budget for the already existing uh, backend for EC2. Um, so I created a backend for Flame to um, spin up resources on the HPC clusters in the university. Um, because I, I've seen this keynote um, running 64 uh, training jobs on GPUs at the same time with Flame on Fly.io, um, and I wanted to do similar things. So, yeah. But what is Slurm? Uh, Slurm is an HPC cluster scheduling tool. Um, it's widely used on different HPC clusters, including uh, the ones in the uh, Free University Berlin, and uh, in the compute uh, data center at uh, University of Erlangen, um, where we'll, we will use the uh, cluster in a few seconds. Uh, Slurm is designed for batch jobs. So basically, you submit uh, your, your data and the processing you want to do, and then it will allocate the resources and get back at some point. But there, the feedback cycle doing that is very long, and I want to have something more interactive. And so I thought about how to do that, and I created, uh, I connected this laptop via SSH to the login host and uh, allocated one worker in the cluster to run the live book. And then I can spin up the flame pool and allocate flame workers on different cluster nodes to do computations. Uh, Slurm has different commands to do that. There is the sbatch command, where you basically write uh, these definitions on which partition of the cluster you want to run and what the constraints are and how many GPUs, for example, you want to have. And um, after, uh, when, you, when I write this in the, in the backend, I write this batch down, down to a file and then start it on the cluster and submit the job. There's also the srun command to get an interactive job. Um, but it's easier to just spin it up and get the process ID, uh, the, the ID of the of the job back. So then, um, for example, kill the uh, kill the batch job again if the recon uh, the connection to the cluster didn't work. Something something else went wrong. Um, for later, I will have a look into also using S run to do that. So how do we define a flame pool on an HPC cluster? We have to do some additional configurations. Um, for example, the extract directory needs to be on a, on a path uh, that, is, uh, that is big enough and is cleaned up afterwards. And uh, then we basically have to write down here in this, in this backend uh, the definition that we saw earlier. Um, what we try to allocate, and 
for too long, uh, how, how long we want to allocate it. And when we've done that, we can just use the flame call uh, as on any other flame system. Setup on a cluster is a bit um, more difficult, I would say, uh, than than on other systems because you, you you're not able to install anything on your own except when you use these uh, special techniques, for example, the um, environment modules for linking in the CUDA environment, CUDNN, the compilers, and uh, then I used a Conda, which is a Python tool. Uh, basically, um, but or a, pack, uh, um, a package management system for for, for Python, uh, but I use it to install Elixir and Erlang on the system because it was there, and uh, I don't want it to fiddle around with uh, with other systems um, there as well. I also had a look into the Apptainer, so you can also run containers on on these batch clusters, uh, on the storm clusters, but um, when doing that, uh, you, you have to link in to start slum, to interact with the slum cluster, and this wasn't viable for me. Um, yeah. The interesting part is that these uh, clusters are, uh, these no cluster nodes are connected with very fast interconnects. Um, one possible is uh, InfiniBand, which is used on the cluster in the University of Berlin. Um, and uh, you could use remote direct memory access to, uh, to do the Erlang distribution instead of uh, TCP IP. Um, but I haven't looked into it. If someone is interested, uh, talk to me later. And yeah, let's, let's have a look. Um, I already started and connected the lifebook. Um, I got an instance with a small GPU to be sure that I actually uh, get this uh, now because I cannot pre-allocate resources. It's possible, but the, the university wasn't answering. Um, <laughs> um, so then, for just as an example, I load an embedding model um, and some legal data from, from German law, and then I uh, create a graph to, to display what we, uh, what we already processed. And um, now we can start that, and this, this will take a while um, to load the model into the GPU, but after that uh, it's very um, interactive to to get the information into the graph by pushing, uh, using the, the Kino uh, push mechanism to send new data into the graph. Um, yeah, here my plan was to start it a bit earlier, um, but what we can do in the meantime is uh, to connect to the other cluster and um, have a look um, have a look there, how we can leverage the annex serving. Um, here I already started the flame pool and um, I was loading it. This, this is correct here. Uh, here, I was uh, start, uh, loading a LAMA 3.1 model and uh, into four A100 GPUs. And we can see here these four flame worker nodes are connected. And now we can use um, LangChain to do function calling on it to actually extract um, an a knowledge graph from a sentence, and here we can see the uh, information popping in. And just for this one inference, 
it's not that interesting, but we can also do uh, lots of more data and um, compute it on a little bit bigger text and do that. So, um, yeah, this, it just works. <laughs> and um, yeah, now we can have a look what's happening here. Um, maybe I have to disconnect this one again, because somehow um, two live books on localhost were not working that good. So, still not started. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, these smaller GPUs here that are allocated um, take a while to um, to to load the model in and start, but it should be visible within the next few seconds. Um, I was very, very fast. <laughs> um, let's have a look into um, into how how tool calling uh, is implemented um, with uh, with Langchain. Um, so what what you have to do to get the model to call tools is you have to use the right uh, templates for your prompts to to get, hand over the information about um, about what what functions are callable and uh, which parameters you have to give uh, the, the model has to give uh, to, to actually call a function and uh, this is the uh, JSON uh, tool calling of uh, Llama 3.1 um, that is uh, merged into Langchain so you can also use it and there's also a custom uh, tool calling for the uh, uh, 3.2 models um, where I implemented the specific parser to, to parse that because here I could just use uh, the JSON parser, um, but th this one looks like um, uh, like like Python code or something, um, and I had to create a parser for that. So let's have a look. Here we can see data popping in. Um, what I do here now is uh, just for example purposes. Um, a vector, uh, create a vector embedding uh, for chunks of texts um, distributed over four um, GPU nodes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. It works. You can use it. And uh, if you have any problems, um, you find me on the Along Ecosystem uh, Slack channel. Uh, Slack. The audience. Uh, no questions. Let's let's be check line. Which code? Uh, on GitHub. Um, I think you can find it here. 